Thanks, Thanks Eric. Are we good? We're open, ready to roll. Okay. All right. We will call this meeting to order. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, first item of approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll second that. Been moved and second to approve the agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Just let it be clear that uh, Elisa is not here. She's on vacation, I believe. I don't think she's on. And Anthony called me late this evening and had an appointment uh, with one of his children. So, oh, okay. uh, so it's just us three. Hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the first action item, um, I think we. Uh, yeah, Steve's unmuted, but the first uh -huh. action item would be the approval of the service agreement for expedited executive search. Uh, do you all have time to review that? Yeah. I'll, yeah. Make a, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the human uh, capital enterprise agreement as presented. And, and I'll second. Been moved and second to approve the uh human capital enterprises agreement all those in favor signify by saying aye <laughs> aye aye, aye. those same sign motion carries all right uh with that steve you're up if you can hear us i certainly can well good evening uh jason and members of the board i just want to check are we comfortable uh on a first name basis uh i, I prefer uh being just a bit more informal but uh Certainly can use uh, Director Rayner or President Rayner, but just wanted to check. Certainly, certainly. Well, now that you're asking, no, I'm <laughs> Jason's preferred. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, the purpose of our meeting is to provide mm -hmm. a general overview of the it, expedited search process, provide an orientation on uh, the search activities and to respond to board questions, either about the timeline or uh, search activities. We do need a direction on two matters. Uh, first, uh, board uh, participation on finalist referencing, and then second, whether or not the board wishes to have finalists uh, engaged uh, by the firm with a third party for a comprehensive background check. So we'll talk about those as appropriate. In advance, I've provided an outline of uh, our uh, time together um, and just want to jump in. And uh, if you've got questions on each of the topics that have been identified in that advanced organizer, please. Uh, we'll just take a moment after each of those items are covered and uh, respond to any questions or uh, take any direction that the board may have uh, where appropriate, and then uh, just move on to the next topic. Sound, so, sound good? Fine. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, given a conversation that Jason and I had uh, this past week, our proposed a timeline of activities includes the following. Um, dates and activities. Today, May 30th, is the planning meeting with the board. On June 7th, uh, we would have the slate meeting with the board in executive session. On June 12th, 13th, and 14th, the 14th would be optional in the event that uh, the board advances more than two finalists we would conduct in-person finalist interviews and executive session with the board. Uh, on July 1st, that is the anticipated interim superintendent start date. Hey, so let's... Steve. Oh, real quick, Steve, just wanted to clarify for everybody else. Um, looking at the uh, timeline as it related to the interview process mm -hmm. um, and with well, <clears throat> me working a full-time job. Um, 
we would have to do it in the evening if it was an hour, hour and a half, two hours per candidate. You know, we'd be there at least six hours or longer. So I suggested we, well, actually, Steve kind of suggested maybe we break it up into a couple different days, uh, the 12th and the 13th versus just the 13th, because we do have a meeting on the 14th as well. So it's going to be a long week. And so we I have could, three people that work full-time jobs. Yeah. Yeah. That was only thing. So. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, we envision those being roughly two-hour meetings in total, approximately an hour uh, for uh, the uh, finalist interview, uh, 20 to 30 minutes of a debrief facilitated by me with the board. On the first day, we have an orientation relative to the interview questions, assigning the questions, some protocols around what to uh, not say, um, and our responsibilities in terms of uniformly asking questions so that every finalist gets the same experience in terms of fairness and equitable uh, access to the same uh, content in the same manner. Um, and then on the very last day, whether that happens on the 13th or the 14th, if you select three finalists to advance, um, we have uh, an additional roughly 30 minutes to debrief and process an executive session on all three of the finalists or two of the finalists uh, as a way of getting prepared to transition into open session to act on the sole finalist. So they're roughly one and a half to two hours in length. On uh, June 7th, the slate meeting, we expect to present a slate of three to five candidates uh, for the board to consider. Uh, we'll highlight the rationale for considering these candidates. We'll speak to their background and experiences and why we believe that might be a good fit and match. Uh, prior to, to the meeting, the board will be given a confidential link to uh, the candidate okay. materials to review in advance. We anticipate being able to ship that link to the board on the evening of June 5th. Given the compressed nature of this timeline, uh, we've got a lot of uh, wheels in motion behind the scenes in order to expedite this. I know that typically we like to give board directors a good week to review the materials before we get into the slate meeting but we simply don't have the luxury of time here. So I know that this puts pressure on uh, working board directors um, and uh, uh, understand that that uh, could, could be problematic, uh, but given the compressed nature of the timeline, uh, the, 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 sooner, uh, the soonest that we can pivot in getting all of those materials pulled together, including our own reference check on each of uh, the uh, candidates that are part of the slate, we just don't have enough time to, to do that. And that includes working on the weekend for Hank and I. Um, I had a question, Steve. Um, I've heard from community members that they know of people that were interested in the board position or the superintendent position, whether it be interim or full-time. Do you have a list of people that you have in a pool? Or are you going to be looking at people that are interested in a job outside of what you have in your business? Yeah. First, um, if you hear of names that you believe we should consider um, reaching out to, uh, please uh, forward that information to me. Um, I know that Jason has already forwarded a name that has come uh, to him, uh, and uh, we reach out to those uh, individuals to see if there is any uh, a potential fit and match and interest. Uh, secondly, um, know that we just released, and hopefully uh, you saw a copy of our e-blast that we send out to our listserv subscribers. We have 40,000 subscribers nationwide. Jason and I were on a call a little bit earlier in uh, planning for this meeting and uh, some uh, additional uh, follow-up <laughs> activities. 
um, know that uh, I, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised at the, uh, the that the interest that this opportunity, even an interim opportunity, is drawing, not just from uh, Washington State but across the country. I believe you're you're going to have a very uh, viable, strong pool of candidates to consider. Uh, including sitting superintendents who are interested in moving to the Columbia Valley. Uh, 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 recently uh, retired superintendents who have expressed interest and uh, executive cabinet level positions and others in leadership roles in school systems who aspire to the superintendency. Okay, thank you. I think that answers my question. Be to the people that called and said, hey, I know of somebody, but they didn't give me names, so I would have to get back in touch with them. Yeah, yeah please forward those to, to me, and if you've got contact information, uh, that would be helpful. We're, okay. we're, we're, we're pretty good at sleuthing. Uh, mm -hmm. If we don't have a contact information, uh, our networks uh, are, are pretty deep, and um, we're able to uh, activate those networks to get an email or a telephone number. Okay, thank you. Yeah. At that slate meeting, we'll present three to five and we will uh, invite the board to provide direction on naming two to three finalists. Uh, that happens in an open meeting. Uh, and we actually use uh, letters as a proxy for names because our recommendation is uh, that the board uh, conduct the search in a confidential manner. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had several conversations with uh, sitting superintendents who asked me today if, in fact, this would be a closed confidential search, recognizing that that sometimes influences uh, whether or not they choose to uh, make application. Questions about the June 7th slate meeting? I think I understand it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we use uh, Microsoft OneDrive. I will create uh, uh, folders for every applicant that is part of the slate. You'll see their materials in sequence consistent across uh, each of the uh, candidate files. Um, so it'll be pretty uniform and we scaffold this. We provide uh, a memo in advance. And obviously if anyone has difficulty ac accessing uh, this confidential link, we're available by phone or by Zoom to uh, uh, provide some support. Let's talk a little bit about the finalist interviews uh, with the board. Uh, these also, as I mentioned, will be conducted in executive session. Uh, the interview, again, will be approximately one hour in length and there will be scripted a set of prepared questions by the firm. Uh, if you have a question or a topic you believe should, uh, 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 should be asked, um, please uh, send that uh, to me in an email. We reserve the right to sort of tailor the language um, so that uh, it's uh, uniform and consistent. But um, uh, we, we want to make sure that if you've got some questions that you want to make sure is posed, that uh, you give us you give us a little bit of lead time so that we have enough time to tailor that and then pivot that into the final document. Um, if you could get questions or topics to me by June 7th, the morning of June 7th, I'll have enough time to work on integrating those, uh, modifying those as appropriate, and then including them in the final set of questions. Steve, I have a question for you. On the, uh -huh. the list of the, the candidates that we'll be looking at, um, I know initially we're looking uh, for an interim, but um, could this, the interim candidates, I'm assuming that these candidates could also be candidates that could be applying for the full-time position, is that correct? 
That is correct. Um, and several individuals that I've had conversations with today uh -huh. uh, have expressed interest in uh, serving on a continuing uh, basis as the permanent uh, superintendent. Okay, that's good. After each candidate interviews, as I mentioned, we'll uh, do a debrief. We use a protocol as a way of um, identifying warm feedback, something that uh, we've experienced during the course of the interview that was really positive uh, about uh, the candidate. Um, we also uh, ask for cool feedback, which is uh, the opposite of something that was uh, positively experienced. It's something that was uh, maybe either off-putting or we were wondering about or something that struck you as um, just um, uh, it created some level of discomfort for you. Um, we, we, we ask that we follow that protocol for each of the interviews so that we have some way of really uniformly assessing uh, the interview itself. Know that when we get to the final debrief, you'll be looking at all of the data inputs, including the materials that were submitted, including the referencing that the firm has conducted, including the referencing that uh, the board uh, has uh, conducted. If you choose to participate in those uh, re uh, references and uh, any of the optional background information that uh, is pulled together by our third party. So all of that is considered and we have a, another a protocol that we use as a way of really uh, assessing the right fit and match given the current context and conditions that exist in a Prosser school district. Questions about the finalist interview process. Pretty straight, pretty yeah. straightforward. Mm -hmm. We do come back into open session. The board uh, by motion will then act on selecting a sole finalist in a second. There's an opportunity for deliberation again, using a letter as a proxy for that person. Uh, it usually takes two to three days to finalize uh, the uh, terms of a uh, contract and we'll work on uh, who will be representing the board, uh, identify those uh, individuals, um, and uh, then get to work on contacting the finalist and then engaging in a conversation around uh, the terms of the contract. Let me talk just uh, briefly about finalist reference checks and uh, we do find these very illuminating. We find that it's very illuminating for board directors to participate in those calls and conversations, particularly when those calls and conversations are also with other board directors who have experienced uh, the candidate's uh, leadership. Although we also recognize that some board directors aren't comfortable uh, in having those kinds of conversations. so. It's really uh, one of choice individually. Um, we do uh, have a standard reference form uh, that we use, uh, and we provide uh, some scripted uh, prompts as a way of starting uh, the conversation. And then um, we uh, uh, ask that uh, those get completed by a certain date. Uh, those are then shipped to a lead consultant to me so that I can uh, format that into uh, a PDF and then get those uploaded uh, into the candidate files, which you will have already had uh, access uh, to uh, before the slate meeting. And we'll move just the selected finalists so that that gets updated and we're not getting muddied in other files where candidates are not advanced. So the question here is, um, and of course we have two board directors, uh, Alyssa and Anthony who aren't here, 
um, whether or not uh, you, you would be um, interested in participating in those calls. Sure. I would find it very interesting yeah. myself. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I think we could all do a little bit of it, and I'm sure Elisa and, and Anthony would probably agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, know that we will have had seven reference sources to consider for each finalist. Uh, two letters of recommendation, which they are submitting already as part of their application materials. They have also been asked to identify uh, three uh, references that we can contact. And then as a standard business practice, Human Capital Enterprises identifies additional references from publicly available sources. So often uh, we will go to a district website and if that uh, candidate is a superintendent, we might um, identify the chief fiscal officer or business manager, their name, their telephone number. If that person was not identified as a reference. So we're trying to triangulate and get sources of information that can give us a broader view of the candidates' uh, strengths um, and uh, opportunities uh, for growth uh, in the future. We prepare a call list for each board director. So know that uh, that will come to you with explicit instructions, uh, contact information, and if we have two finalists and we're conducting uh, four reference checks per finalist, that's about eight calls that need to be made. If you have three, uh, that's 12 calls that need to be made. So okay. we'll just jigsaw that across the five board members. So no cold calls. <laughs> uh, no cold calls. In fact, what we do <laughs> before we actually uh, begin making those calls, uh, we inform uh, the finalists, and they're instructed to inform uh, their references, including the references we identify, so mm -hmm. that they have a heads up before getting a call. Okay. Any questions about referencing? No. No. Okay. Super. Optional background checks. Uh, there's a price to this. We contract with a third party firm that uh, does these comprehensive background checks. It includes a criminal background check, a financial uh, background check, and a news search. The fee for the comp comprehensive background uh, check is 1800 If we exclude the news search, it reduces the fee to 1200 per uh, finalist. We strongly uh, recommend that boards do this as part of their due diligence, but uh, we, we uh, leave that up to uh, the board. So I'll need some direction here. Obviously, we're not going to execute on this until after we identify uh, the finalists on June 7th, but um, it often takes somewhere between seven to 10 days to complete these conferences comprehensive background checks. So um, if it takes 10 days, we'll likely be at a place where the board has already um, acted on the sole finalist. Um, maybe we've uh, uh, reached terms on a contract, uh, but often what we will do is we'll make an, uh, an offer of employment condition on the successfully uh, a passing a, a comprehensive background check. Sometimes it, it just depends on how busy the firm is. Sometimes, uh, you know, we get these back in three to five days. So I have a maybe a question concerning that. So if we went ahead and did that, which I, I do think it's probably uh, prudent to do, but um, I think in one of the things I read from you, Steve, was that once we identify it, the finalist, uh, the one that we've decided, um, if it's contingent upon that, um, and that background check doesn't come in, but we've already let the other candidates know that they didn't make, you know, that we didn't select them, does it put us back at square one? Or are we going to have to conduct the interviews well, and go after number two? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Yeah, we uh, typically have not found any issues with any of the finalists that we advance. That doesn't mean that that would uh, be uh, the case here in Prosser. Um, in the event that that were to occur and we found something, the board found something that was uh, troublesome that made you uncomfortable, then your options are to uh, move to candidate number two and extend an offer of uh, employment and explain the circumstances um, or uh, start the process over um, that that, that uh, is really the uh, two options that, that you have available. Um, it, it likely, uh, you know, depending upon who's sitting in the number two spot, um, it, it likely would not preclude that number two from accepting an offer of employment. Um, but sometimes, you know, uh, people, um, you know, make decisions that, um, may or may not uh, necessarily make sense for the organization, but makes sense to where they're at uh, personally and professionally. Okay, thank you. I think I spoke to the HCE e-blast um, already, and again, uh, pleasantly surprised with uh, the number of inquiries and responses, in fact, I told Jason today my calendar has been absolutely booked with one-on-one uh, -on -one calls with uh, people who are really interested in learning more. That's a good problem to have, really. Very good problem to have. We spoke to uh, the uh, nature of conducting this expedited uh, search process in a confidential manner. Happy to respond to questions that anyone may have um, regarding uh, that recommendation. Any questions? Mm -hmm. No, I'm good. I don't. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the last item uh, is really HCE's legal responsibility for records retention connected to the search. So it Every step in the process uh, will remind you that all hard copies, documents, materials connected to applicants and finalists will need to be a return to human capital enterprises. Um, any electronic documents that you've saved to uh, computers or uh, phones will need to uh, be deleted and removed permanently from hard drives. Um, Documents, hard copy uh, documents can be uh, delivered to uh, Selena um, or to me if we're in person. Um, we review all of the documents and retain those at our California headquarters for retention purposes. So just want to give you a, a, that sort of heads up. Uh, so after the meeting on the 7th, if there are any notes, uh, that you've taken or any hard copies of documents that you may have printed out. Um, if, if you still need those, certainly you can keep those, but at the very end of the search, we'll need to collect all of those materials and make sure that any electronic documents uh, are uh, deleted and permanently removed from hard drives. Any questions about that? No. Okay. Um, as a follow-up to um, our conversation tonight, um, I'll follow up with uh, more specificity around some of these dates relative to when you can anticipate having access to the confidential link on um, June 5th. Uh, questions or topics for uh, finalist interviews on June 7th. We'll ask that the references be conducted over the course of three days between uh, June 8th and uh, 10th with the reference notes you've taken shipped to me uh, by June 11th. So all of that can get formatted and uploaded into the OneDrive candidate files. 
but I'll put all of this in writing so that we don't lose track of any of it. Uh, that'll come to Jason uh, tomorrow with Selena CC, and uh, Selena will distribute that uh, to uh, the entire board. Any additional questions? Um, yeah, I did have a, a couple, and it, I know, um, you know, looking at like expenses and, and trying to really watch our expenses as best we can. Uh, Steve, I, I know we're, we're going to end up paying travel expenses, which is customary. I get it. Is there a, a feel for how many of these can be conducted, uh, via zoom and how many are preferred to be conducted, um, in person? We always recommend that, uh, finalist interviews are uh, conducted in person. It's possible that you might have a finalist who is on the East Coast that would require uh, airfare, um, hotel accommodations, uh, and, um, you know, really that's at the direction of the board. If the board has an interest in minimizing uh, costs uh, for travel for finalists, we can certainly entertain uh, doing um, a Zoom interview with that particular finalist. So if I, so like speaking, you know, as we look through our face, our calendar of, of, of dates here, um, I know on, was it next Wednesday is the 7th, um, you're looking to come over on that day to walk us through a lot of this. Is that something that can be done via Zoom or is it something that we need to do in person? My preference is uh, to do that in uh, person. Um, there's a intimacy uh, of being in the room and engaging in those conversations uh, more directly. Um, so that, that would be my uh, preference. Um, you know, I have family in uh, the Tri-Cities. Um, I, I don't anticipate having a hotel cost as long as my brother will pay up. Um, <laughs> as long as your brother still speaking to you, huh? <laughs> he, he is still speaking. Uh, oh, to good. Me. Yeah, we have a great relationship. <laughs> Thank you. Although it could turn sour in a half. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, for uh, the event on the seventh, depending of how, uh, depending upon how late we go, I likely will just uh, turn around and drive home. It's uh, you know a three and a half hour drive. If we wrap up by seven thirty, I'm home by eleven. So that would be my preference on just the one day sort of commitments. If we're there, uh, engaged in finalist interviews on the twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth. Obviously, I'm not going to drive back and forth for three consecutive days. I would uh, likely travel in on the 11th uh, or the 12th and just stay with family through the 13th. Yeah. Okay. No, that works. Um, my next question, um, and this actually was something Elisa brought up. Um, she's in favor of doing more of an in-depth investigation you know, the third party. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, do we need to let you know yes or no on that as soon as possible? We'll, we'll need direction uh, no later than uh, June 7th. So uh, I'll ask at that slate meeting whether or not you want to conduct that background check. At that time, we will know uh, the names of the finalists advanced by the board and uh, we'll, we'll uh, move forward with that as quickly as practical on June 8th. Perfect. Probably should have that information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going forward. Okay. We do strongly recommend that. It's just, you know, um, it's... Um, yeah. Yes, makes good sense. Yeah, me. Have that before we invest a whole lot more time and money into the person. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's and J Jason, um, as I recall, you're gonna be traveling 
um, on those dates for the finalist interviews. Is that still true? Um, or did I misunderstand? No, yeah, I will be gone that entire week. Um, I can zoom in or I can call in and be a part of those interviews, mm -hmm. uh, but I will be out of state the entire week. Yeah. So uh, we've actually done uh, both in person, simultaneous, uh, uh, remote interviews with other districts in the past. So uh, we'll navigate that. Uh, uh, together, we'll just need to know who our point of contact is at some point on the technology side, um, mm -hmm. but, but uh, uh, that, that should not be uh, problematic as long as you have stable uh, broadband connectivity wherever you're at, Jason. Well, hopefully the phone works at least at a minimum, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it shouldn't be, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be out in the middle of nowhere, so. Okay, super. Fine. Yeah. It, it's very doable. I zoomed in from Kauai, and I've zoomed in from Arizona, so it's it's pretty easy to do. You know, I zoomed in from Crow Butte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, is there anything else for the good of the order, Jason? Or I don't, orders. I don't think so. You guys have any more questions? No, nope. I think I'm good, Jason. No, it's all pretty, I mean, it's all pretty well straightforward and I appreciate the clarity. Um, I think that helps alleviate, a, you answer a lot of questions prior, you know, prior to even coming in. So I appreciate that. Well, I so look, I, I so look forward to seeing you all uh, next week in person. And uh, unless there was any other comments, I will sign off. Okay. No. Good no, sounds good. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. You guys you. take good care. You too. Thank Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Well, that was um, that was shorter than I expected, so that's good. It's going to be really busy, isn't it? Yep. It's going to be a long month. Yeah. Sorry. If we, have <laughs> other, we have a lot of other stuff mixed in there too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So with that, uh, we actually have a special meeting tomorrow at noon um, via Zoom. And, and so. And then this on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so tomorrow at noon uh, via Zoom, and then on the seventh, we'll actually have another special board meeting. Um, and I. I think we've contemplated changing that to 6 p.m., not 5.30. Okay, 6 o'clock? Yeah, it uh, coincides with the special ed director's um, interview process. Okay. It may push till 6, so okay. we'll move uh, that slate meeting to 6. So. Okay. Uh, with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Mm.